Trump has called on supporters to show up in protest today. Let's put this up on the screen. Um, he was on a radio program uh, talking about, you know, how he wants, well, this was with Roger Stone, a uh, longtime friend and ally who he also pardoned uh, for his alleged crimes. So he says, our country has to protest. We've lost everything. Uh, they have to go out and they have to protest pe peacefully, he says. They have to go out. Um, he also called Justice Department Special Counsel Jack Smith, who is, of course, heading the investigation. He called him deranged. Now, I have no idea how many people are going to show up, What you know, whether the protests are more likely to be peaceful or not. But if history is any guide, when it was the New York indictment, and he also encouraged people to show up and protest, there wasn't a huge mm -hmm. turnout. I did see some chatter online, some reporting online that like the Proud Boys and others feel like, oh, this could be a setup. We're worried about after January 6th, like we're worried about the feds and all that should sort of stuff, yes. as they probably yes. should be. Um, and so my guess will be that the protests will not be a whole, whole lot to, to talk about. But, you know, you, you never know. Trump has a very adamant base. Um, he has directly asked them to show up and support him in South Florida outside the Miami courthouse. I know the city is definitely preparing for uh, a large and potentially contentious uh, mm -hmm. gathering there. So that's what we know on that front. Yeah, I am put this up on the screen because I actually think this is the most important part uh, is he, guess what? He's going to host his first major fundraiser the day of his, that is really what it all comes down to for me, Crystal, is whether people show up to him or not, as we learned in Manhattan, well, not that many people, although of course in Florida, there's quite a few more Trump supporters. But regardless, when Trump is under attack, that's when he raises the most money. That's mm -hmm. why he's doing his press conference and big appearance or rally, whatever you want to call it, at Bedminster. And that's also why he had that same gathering on the night of his Manhattan indictment and why he flew back to Florida and had that big Mar-a-Lago event because he has always raised the most whenever he's under attack. Mm -hmm. Impeachment one was a bonanza for him. Impeachment two, even more of a bonanza. It's like we never seem to learn that lesson at the very least in terms of the political benefit. And, you know, you just yesterday, what did we bring everybody the news? 61% support in the Republican primary. Ron DeSantis not only didn't get a polling bump whenever he announced, he got a polling drop. He got a polling and collapse. And every single, uh, <laughs> uh, every contender going after Trump on these documents and all this other, uh, all these other issues, people like Asa Hutchinson and Chris Christie, they had the highest level of I will not support that person. Yeah. The highest level. Yeah. So it shows you that, you know, any Republican who wants to play with this in the primary, it's not going to work. Now, of course, that does not dispel the fact that independent voters, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. And it just generally feeds into the drama narrative. So I'm not saying it makes him more powerful, powerful for the general election. But in terms of the Republican primary, there is no question this is nothing but a benefit to him. And he will raise a probably historic amount of money as a result of these charges. The other thing that's interesting yeah. is partly because he has so burned his own fundraising list, his grassroots fundraising has actually fallen off quite significantly. Mm. It's not anything like what it used to be. That's true. But the thing that does juice it is, you know, the raid on Mar-a-Lago, indictment in Manhattan, indictment uh, now in South Florida. That juices his numbers. But even the fact that he is focused on, because this isn't a grassroots fundraiser, this is for the, the big high-dollar donors, um, this event that he's doing in Bedminster. And they say that in contrast to his previous campaigns, he actually this time has to work the phones. He's got to do call time. He's got to woo bundlers. He's mm -hmm. got to woo, woo other major contributors. Um, they're expecting more than 300 bundlers to be on board the campaign by the end of June. But, you know, previously he didn't have to do that same, like, wooing the big guy grind, the big guy's grind that um, other candidates always have to do, that like Ron DeSantis has to do, for example, and Joe Biden has to do because they don't have that same level of grassroots support. So there's there's two pieces here. On the one hand, yes, this will certainly juice his grassroots fundraising dollars, no doubt about it. But it does show you that, you know, even the base, like they've been so tapped in terms of their uh, fundraising. And the, the number of emails that Trump has sent oh, I know. I'm to on his the supporters list. is ends. insane. Yeah. And it's really burned every Republican candidate because people are just so exhausted by the constant pleas, yeah. existential pleas for cash. But so this would be this will be one event 
that will certainly help him in that regard. Um, you know, there's also, you sent this this morning, Sagar, yes. there's rumblings that donors are still like, oh, you know, if Trump looks like he's going down, maybe we need to get uh, Brian Kemp into the race. Maybe we need to get, um, maybe we need to get uh, Glenn Youngkin into the race. And it's just incredible because you already have all of these contenders. What do you think is going to be different about a Glenn Youngkin jumping in that's going to supplant Trump? Like, I I'm sorry, but I just, it feels to me like this primary is all but over before it's even begun. I mean, we can't say the obituary just yet, but uh, I was I'll just looking it. that uh, Ron DeSantis' <laughs> people are very upset with Chris Christie and with everybody else. They're like, they're pulling away from all of our potential support. And I'm like, yeah, that, that is kind of true. You, yeah, but you, you, you are. know what? That's fine. Yeah. But here's the thing. Even if none of them were in the race, the argument from Trump's opponents and the donors who are allied with his opponents was like, oh, he's got his base of 35 to 40 percent support, but that's it. Well, the latest poll has him 60 something percent. It's not just that one either. It's even, like significant numbers that have him over 50. Exactly. Yeah. So even if everyone but Ron DeSantis drops out, Trump is still winning. So that's their, their case. Their theory of the case has kind of already collapsed, which is they had to think somewhere in their heart of hearts that these indictments, the legal trouble, whatever, that even though Republicans still liked them, they'd be like, yeah, it's too messy, I'm ready to move on. That is not the case. They had to think that, all right, he's got his hardcore base, but there's a majority of Republicans who wanna move on. Clearly not the case. Mm -hmm. They thought, and we remember, we covered these articles on Ron DeSantis before he jumped in the race. They're like, yeah, his polls have been flagging lately, but he's not even in the race yet. Like, wait till he gets in the race and you're gonna see how he picks up ground. Well, he's only gone in the other direction. So all of the claims that were made to bolster the case of Ron DeSantis in particular, but all of his you know, adversaries in the Republican primary, they've already kind of fallen apart. I think that their case is falling. Uh, I will just say what? Votes haven't been cast yet, so let's not entirely count them out. Although, you know, I'm pretty excited to see how the votes cast out. We could see a historic polling miss, right? Like maybe there is some secret faction of Republicans that really are- uh, The silent yeah, DeSantis the, the, voter? The, the, not even silent, the <laughs> silent anti-Trump voter in the Republican primary, to be clear, not in the general election. Because I actually do think that person does kind of exist at the least in the general election. But for a primary, we're not seeing a lot of that evidence. So far, we're just seeing Trump absolutely dominate every single contest, media cycle, and everything that he touches, which with pretty no much fits sight. with everything that I always thought was gonna happen from the very beginning. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.